just kind of kind of that burst right before the right before halftime, how important was that? And just a game like this that was so low yeah. scoring go up nine. Yeah, anytime you could, you know, put a stretch together scoring in a game like this, um, you know, it's gonna benefit you. Uh, I, I thought their inability to score the start of the second half and our ability to increase the lead at the end of the first half was was really uh, was big, especially how we played in that last four or five minutes of the game. You know, we, we didn't give ourselves a chance. We fouled on free throws. We gave up offensive rebounds. We had a flagrant foul. We couldn't pass and catch a couple times. And so they, you know, it got the game closer than it really needed to be. But those stretches, those two stretches right there was, um, I thought were key in the game. Matt, we know over the years, <clears throat> throughout the time here, this is one of the best rivalries um, in, in college basketball when you right. think about it. Um, that is seven straight for your team now against right. IU. Um, what does it say about your program, about your players, and how important this game is to them? Yeah, you know, anytime you can play, you know, your rival and compete and win, it's a, it's a big accomplishment. Um, you know, we've been able to string some games together. Um, but it's, you know, it's... The game's cyclical, you know, it just, it just is. You know, we've also lost four or five times straight to IU before. Um, before that, we won four or five times straight. So things, you know, they go in cycles and it happens, and we've actually, you know, been on the uptick, you know, with this one. But uh, things can change quickly. And so, you know, you have to stay grounded and stay humble and just, you know, just try to move to your next game. But, uh, you know, proud of our guys. You know, it's, uh, it's hard to win an assembly hall. You know, it's hard to win this game. Um, but obviously, you have an advantage. You know, whenever you're at home, and that gives you a little bit of an advantage, but doesn't guarantee anything. Coach, it's the lowest shooting percentage by IU in six years. What were you in six years? Yep. Since 2014. And what was <laughs> what was clicking defensively tonight? You know, just trying to make it hard. You know, um, we have a lot of respect for Trace Jackson Davis. You know, he's a fabulous player. Why other people don't double him, I don't know. Um, but we are going to double him. And so I recruited him, spent a lot of time trying to get him, obviously didn't do a very good job of that. Um, but I've watched him play a lot, I have a lot of respect for him. And just trying to make somebody else beat us, to be frank with you, just to be even. They have good, you know, perimeter players, and we thought if we could have good rotations out of the double, you saw where they made a couple passes early, and then we fouled, I think, one time with uh, Brunk on a big-to-big -big pass where we had a little bit of a breakdown away from the ball. But we, we wanted just to clog things up, and not let him get going. And uh, that, that he was really our focal point. And then at the end, just taking up Devontae Green, his space, making him shoot tough shots. We thought if he can make one or two, that, that gets him going to where he makes five or six, or he misses five or six. You know, he's just a streaky player. I and mean, we've dealt with streaky guys that are on our team. And sometimes those makes hurt you, and sometimes those makes help you. Um, but that's really what we were trying to do. And then not let Al Durham be a part of the game. You know, once again, you know, he wasn't a part of the game, and really Green wasn't a part of the game, even though he has 11, but he didn't on 15 shots, and he's three for 14, and he has four turnovers, and um, Al Durham has three turnovers and, you know, and, and two points. So neither one of those guys were a part of the game there or here. So we wanted to double trace, and we wanted to make it really hard on those two, and not giving anything to anybody else, but, you know, kind of let the chips fall where they may, and, you know, it's really the first time for us, you know, we've struggled, we've been inconsistent um, from an offensive standpoint. And can we beat a good team when we don't shoot well or play well? And uh, I thought we played a little bit better today. Obviously, we didn't shoot well. And sometimes people confuse the two. Um, but I thought it was a good grinded out win, even though it was, you know, it's pretty hard to watch. Because you guys are getting paid watching this. You're, you're doing a job. You have to be. Not so, well enough, though. Uh, there you go. A couple of you guys are here. <laughs> on your own. <laughs> you obviously mentioned, you know, the doubling trace in the post double there. Yes. Obviously, before you guys actually even had the double, it seemed like you guys did a good job of just denying the post to start with right. a good, you know, sort of initial uh, post defense there. Just well, what impression about your guys, your post yeah. defense? Yeah. You know, we, you get into it because it's just not something that we just do when we play Indiana. Like, you know, Jalen Smith and Oturo and Garza, like, you know, gee, it's just like, it's unbelievable. We have such good big guys in our league, but sometimes with those guys is that we get a namer with our double team instead of getting a namer with our post defense. So we, I thought we did a better job today of playing. We just didn't want to double the whole game. We wanted to knock some things out, make it hard for him to catch it, play post defense, but also make it hard. Like we doubled all their big guys, so we didn't until the end where we, we 
played big for a couple of defensive possessions, and then we allowed Rex Thompson to be one on one from like a possession. I, I still think you know just trying to make them pass out of double teams, and then you know, that was going to help us. But I thought our post defense was was good tonight, and, then, and we had some good quick doubles. And that's when you play big. That's they, they, they keep their guys closer to you. When you stretch it out, it's a little bit harder, um, you know, to do. And so it's, you're just kind of picking your poison. The way the game started, it looked. Like it was going to go the other way just because of their ability to offensive rebound. Mm -hmm. right. They were so good to start the game offensive rebounds, and we couldn't keep them off the glass. So like now that makes me think like even though we're doubling them, you know they're getting a lot of opportunities, and we're just fortunate they didn't make us pay on some of those offensive rebounds to start the game. What changed in your rebounding after the first probably seven or yeah. eight minutes? I just thought our effort. I just thought Indiana's effort was better than ours, and um, I thought it was really good after that eight minute mark. Up until the last three or four minutes of the game, you know, we gave up some offensive rebounds at that time. So I, I just thought our guys' um, ability to just to go get the basketball and battle against them and trying to hit them. Obviously, uh, it's hard to watch the discipline or, or you know, the lack thereof of boxing out during the game. It's hard because you watch the ball a lot. You watch the ball, you watch your action, you watch away from it. And so now it's hard to see four to five guys actually boxing out. And then all of a sudden they get the ball and you're like, you always assume it's the man, it's his man who didn't box out. But then once you go back and watch tape, you realize sometimes it is, but other times it's not because he had to go over and help and you get into a rotation. So you just try to work on those things and, and then try to rebound out of those rotations. Is there any particular reason a few of these games between Purdue and Indiana that they have been so ugly? I have no idea. We've got other <laughs> ugly personnel games. Or the way you yeah, we've had other ugly games outside of playing Indiana. We've proven that one. Um, so, but that's part of basketball. Anytime you get into conference and you're playing in February and March, games normally get a little bit more grimy than they do earlier in the season because it means so much. You know, the younger guys have realized how important it is to play hard and do your job and carry out your assignments. So you get lower scoring games as they go on. Um, you know, it's just it's just the way it is, especially against quality opponents because we know each other. You know, you know each other's tendencies. You've already played once. You watch every game on TV. So, but no, I just think it was one of those grinded out type games. So we're fortunate. It's, it's a big piece of improving when, when your offense doesn't play well and you can still win a game. Coach, can you talk about the offensive boost that Trey and Eric gave you? Obviously, right. your point guard had 17 and 7 tonight, so that's kind of a weird stat line. Right. No, um, you know, Eric did a good job rebounding. You know, I thought he was active, uh, made some plays for us, even though a handful of times in transition, like, you know, we, we lost our mind. With some of our decisions, but I thought Eric Hunter played a really good game. Trey Young had a couple of those. He's eight for 17, but a couple of those misses. You know, he got back and scored the basketball. Um, but just having a place to go with the basketball, right? especially when you um, have some struggles, I mean, you still have to have a place to go with it. And uh, Trey Young's post ups. A lot of people will double him, and then he's passed so well that people stay away from him. And uh, it really opens up some three opportunities when people double us because he's such a good passer. So I thought both those guys played well, did some good things. Obviously, no secret, the position you guys are in when it comes to the postseason here down the stretch. What did you sense was the urgency and desperation maybe your players felt heading yeah. into this game? Because it just seemed like it translated on the floor with performances like Eric and, and John right. had. Yeah, you know, you're just you're trying to play well. Like, I didn't think our effort was very good against Michigan. And that game's important. That game's really important. And, um, you know, it was just unfortunate. Sometimes there's a lot of variables that go into things um, in terms of how you play collectively. And, um, you know, I just thought we, you know, we were, our edge was better tonight. Our attention to detail was better defensively. I don't think our execution was great. But we also had some good looks from the perimeter. I think they didn't go down. I think they could say the same thing also. Um, so, you know, we just have to be better together. And um, you know, we, we, get, we get fragmented defensively when we break down. We still had breakdowns tonight. We still had some things that we were trying to do against them. We had a couple guys make some mistakes that got them out of the game, but I wish I could have played them. Um, and so we, we still aren't on top of things. You know, we were fortunate a couple of those shots didn't go down when Indiana was open. But that we could say the same thing on our end. We had some pretty good looks. But uh, just trying to be better and understand the opportunity. You're so fortunate to be in this opportunity when you keep playing people that are going to go to the NCAA tournament. I know they're not a lot to go to the NCAA tournament, but they take care of the business at home. They will. They will. They've done enough, in my opinion, um, which means nothing. It's <laughs> <laughs> like your opinion about that. Everybody's opinion in this room doesn't mean anything. But I think they will. 
they take care of their business at home. I don't think we're in that position. And, and so, you know, we got to win, you know, a road game. we got to win a home game. we got to go to the tournament, probably win games. You know, not probably we do. So that's just the position. That's the feel that I have for where we are. But it's, it's, it's such a great thing to be in this league, the way we've scheduled and went to 20 games, because now it takes care of everybody. It's harder, but it's better. You know, we were at 16 games when I first came into the league and five and a half teams went to the NCAA tournament. Then we went to 18 games, and then six and a half teams went to the NCAA tournament. Now we're at 20 games. Eight went last year. At the worst, our league's going to get nine, but we could get 10 or 11, and uh, that'd be a cool thing for our league. But we got to keep doing it. we got to keep scheduling up. It's, it's hard. It's hard because every time you turn the corner, you know, you just want to win sitting there on your schedule. Like, hey, let's get this. We're going to beat it. And that, you don't have that in our league anymore. You don't have it at all, but that's what that's what makes it beautiful, and, and that's what people want to see. That's what you want to cover, you know, more than anything. Fans want to see, you know, great games over and over and over, and we've been able to do that in our league. I think that's pretty that's pretty neat. Dave and then Mike. So yeah, so all of that said, now is this one of those games that can get you guys going, or I hope so. Yeah, yeah. When when you you know we we've, we've been inconsistent, but the one thing about being inconsistent is you had to play well to get that tag. You know what I mean? If you don't do that, you're just a bad team. You know, but we've been able to beat Virginia, beat Michigan State, beat Wisconsin, beat Iowa, beat Indiana twice, uh, beat Minnesota in a, in a close game. Um, you know, here so um, you know we won on the road at Northwestern, we won on the road at Indiana, we won on the road at Ohio, and so like we've won. And then you guys look at that, but go find out how many high major teams went to play a game on the road in the MAC. You know, you, just, you don't see it, but we were able to do that and get that win. And um, so all those experiences. You know, you hope to get that level of consistency, and we just have it. But now you're, you're still trying. You never give up. You know, you never give up from that. And so th that answer really lies in how we play at Iowa and how we play against Rutgers. Because we've been here. We won three in a row when we won at Assembly Hall. Then we lost four in a row. And so, like, you know, winning a game doesn't, you know, you haven't arrived. Obviously, you played well in a game. Now, can you play well at this time of the year and back-to-back -back games and hopefully string something together? You know, time will tell. We've proven we have it to do it. But we, we got to be able to do it for a two, three week period here. Along that same line, you mentioned a minute ago how the game changes. Has this season been a, a vivid example of that? And how challenging is it when you're zigzagging yeah. to keep going forward? Yeah, it's part of your job. It's like when people say, like, you know, it's hard to figure out your team. Well, that is my responsibility. You know, I'm the coach. People say, well, you guys didn't play harder than I. Well, that's first and foremost my responsibility if we don't play hard enough. So to me, I try to you know look within and see what I can do. I don't want to change the change. You know, there's staples in the game that aren't going to change. You know, your effort and your attitude and your ability to rebound and take care of the basketball. Those things aren't changing. You know, you have to do those things. You know, you have to be that way. You have to be positive about stuff. And I remain positive as long as their effort's great. I'm not real positive if somebody's going to outplay you or outscrap you. I, I, I get a little sideways. So that that to me is like it's it's a kind of a non-negotiable, and it's one of those things that Purdue. Is it what we've hung our hat on? You know, sometimes we might not get this guy or get that guy. Doesn't mean we can't beat those teams. We can still play well together. And I think Butler through the years has proven that. I think Wisconsin through the years has proven that. And I think we've proven that. You know, but at the end of the day, you can't rest on what's happened before. You know, you got to take your team and mold them. And you know, so hopefully we can you know piece those things together. And like I said earlier, we're in a great position. You know, with all the opportunities. Is there anything else? I have a quick one. Let's just stay all night, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you got to be? That's a good last thing. That was a bad question. Was that? <laughs> <laughs> Compared to this, that's a lot of good answers. <laughs> um, you, you actually mentioned the Virginia one. It seems like this team, and I might be off on this, but when it has to do one really big thing to win a game, when there's one central yeah. focus, it seems to get it done. Am I right on that, number one? And what is it about this team that if it has one key thing to focus on. I think we've played well in, in, in some big games, but I also think we've struggled in big games. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you, your, your preparation is always good. You know what I mean? Like you always do your job. Like if this is a celebration for those guys, like we're in trouble. This isn't a right. celebration. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you move to the next game. You take a day off, you practice a couple days, and you get ready to play your next game. So that that's where it lies. You don't ever give in or change your routine in terms of your preparation, you do everything in your power. You know, if you play well tonight, like you go up and watch film individually, like you played poorly. You know, you just you have to have that mindset of improvement and, and getting better. And so that's all we try to really emphasize. Each guy's a little bit different in terms of their experiences. And, and so, like, but by, by the end of the year, like you, you, you know, 
know, we play one defense. Like, it's not hard. It really is. It's hard to beat people, but you have to know what you're doing. Let them beat us when we stick together and do what we're supposed to. You know, if they beat us that way, then they beat us that way, then i got to make a change. And so I, I think that's the most important thing is just that preparation. Want one more, Dustin? Sure. I'm, I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.